Moving on from the Rocky Horror to my other favourite pair of lips in cinematic history, Alice by Jan Svankmeyer. I have never been greatly impressed by body horror and gore, either emotionally or artistically. What doesn't scare me about it is that I know that it is unreal to me without telling me anything about the world that interests me or that I haven't seen or thought about before. Which is why it's very interesting that one of the most horrific images I have ever been exposed to, to my mind, is the rabbit in Alice sewing himself back together. The rabbit is a taxidermy rabbit and he lives at number 23 in a glass case, um, which is a door number you, you later see he also lives at once we're in Alice's dream. And the rabbit gets into this kind of wonderland by smashing his way out of the case. Like all Alice in all her glory, it is very much part of her mind and set in her mind. And it's a level of fantasy and a level of what if that you only get through boredom. She is bored, like in the story, by her sister reading a book with no pictures in it, and she is left to herself to decide what to do about that. So it follows the Alice that we all know in those ways. And then it takes us to something so wonderfully disturbing that no amount of human beings having bits fall off them has ever done the idea of body horror justice to me. For example, we've got the rat in the trap. The rat, when we first meet him, climbs out of the sea of tears that Alice has cried and starts making a campfire on her head. And he knocks the posts into her skull. And she's quite polite about this because she's a nice, but wouldn't melt little English child who is doing all of the right things in those ways. So pre-war it hurts. And the thing that really upsets her is when it, the rat cuts some of her hair off to make the fire. And at that point, she realises that's going a little bit too far. So she gets rid of him in her hair and it works and off he swims with his all, all of his case and his stuff. And then later on, on the journey, you see this clothed rat in a perfectly normal mousetrap. And there is something so sinister and nasty about that is it because we've met the character? I don't know. Is it because of all the taxidermy animals that make up this Alice story? He's the only one who's still alive. It's really, really sinister about death. And I guess it's nothing new to think that the reason the Alice stories work so well is that your imagination can take you anywhere, but time is limited. You, you only get to go down the rabbit hole one time, eventually the dream will be over. And while it does that in a totally different way to the Watership Down Rabbit, the, this, this takes death in completely other amazing, beautiful directions, I think that I will never be as frightened by anything as I am by the prospect of that kind of animal death. In Spankmeyer's Alice, Alice takes on the role of a lot of the adults that appear in the real story. So she is the Duchess who has to look after the pig and she is very active in all of those roles. She's also the narrator and the relationship between the bored child who has had to create this world or, or has daydreamed or, or, or nightmared her way into this world and what's going on is very different in that respect. You're very aware of the narrator. The rituals of the adult world are also particularly sinister in this version of Alice. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party, in which the ritual has to continue 
no matter how nonsensical. The ritual of the tea party and the ritual of the trial are more a appalling nonsense in the Jan Spankmeyer version than in almost any other I've seen. And it is the panic that is the result of her transgressing from the script that makes the cards fly in the air, that makes the shouts of no room get stronger. And although the nonsense is all around her, it's the idea that society itself is playing by these own nonsense rules and that she is the mad one for being sane or different is, I think, the most frightening idea of all, that you are fundamentally alone in your own perception, which is definitely my favourite thing about psychological horror. We are stuck in our own brains.